Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. And today we're going to talk about the power of inner conversations, unlocking the gateway to your desired reality. What if I told you that the key to transforming your life lies, of course, not in the external world, but within the realm of your own thoughts, specifically your inner conversations. In the tapestry of your mind, each thread is an inner dialogue weaving the fabric of your reality. But what if you could alter these threads, shaping them to manifest the life you've always desired? This is not just a fanciful notion, but a profound truth rooted in the teachings of Neville Goddard. In the lecture, Your Imagination Creates Reality, he states that you must make your inner conversations conform to your imaginal act, and then goes into greater detail saying that all of us are mentally speaking within ourselves every waking moment. Our inner conversations must match the wish fulfilled if we would realize our desire. If our desire is for a better job and we imagine ourselves being congratulated because we are gainfully employed in a wonderful position, we must also make our inner conversations conform to that end. It's my feeling that we don't have conversations like we used to. Less people actually talking to each other than ever before. Maybe it was easier for us to manifest because we could have actual conversations with people in many cases. We must be certain that we are not saying within ourselves something like that boss doesn't believe in promoting people or it would be difficult to find any job at my age, never mind a better one. Or similar statements that would imply that we do not have that which we desire. We must persist in the feeling of our imaginal act by making our mental conversations conform to what we would say had we realized our aim. If, for instance, we wish to own a car, we would imagine a new car parked in our garage or imagine ourselves driving it or imagine our friends admiring it. We must then make our inner conversations reflect the type of conversations we would engage in were we really the owner of a new car. Our conversations could consist of discussing our new car with friends, such as telling them of the wonderful fuel mileage we are receiving or hearing our friends tell us how much they enjoy riding in our new car. Our inner conversations, Goddard tells us, are just as creative as our deliberate imagining of the wish fulfilled. In fact, if they are of the opposite nature, they can negate what we have imagined. You must watch what you are saying internally to make sure that these conversations coincide with your wish fulfilled. If you become aware that these inner talks contradict what you would like to achieve, you must revise them so that they follow along the track that would indicate you already have what you desire or are already the person you wish to be. And so this really got me thinking about inner conversations an important topic that I haven't fully covered when it comes to reality creation. In order to understand Neville's teaching on this, I would definitely check that lecture out, but also he has another powerful one called Inner Talking. In that one, he explains that it's all inner talking anyway, giving examples of his wife and the way that she would have these imaginary conversations with her boss. This is definitely something to explore deeper. And so I've meditated on this for several weeks and really evaluated this in my life. I started to apply some of what I found about this teaching and I've unlocked another gateway for us into the realm of our mind and our imagination. In our constant internal chatter, we are unknowingly engaging in a powerful form of creation. Every silent word, Every unspoken dialogue with ourselves and imagined conversations with others shapes the contours of our lives. These conversations are not mere echoes of our waking thoughts. They are the architects of our reality. By mastering the art of inner talking, we gain the ability to sculpt our existence to turn dreams into tangible experiences. The implications of this are as vast as they are profound. Your inner dialogues 
directly influence your health, relationships, career, and overall happiness? Were the quiet conversations you have with yourself and imaginary others in the solitude of your mind hold the power to bring about real, observable change in the external world? This is not a world of fantasy. It is the reality we live in, a reality that you can learn to shape. This episode is your guide to understanding and harnessing the incredible power of inner talking. It is a journey into the heart of your own psyche, exploring how your inner dialogue shape your life and how you can consciously direct them to create the reality you desire. As you listen, you will discover not just theories, but actionable practices that will teach you how to observe, modify, and master your inner dialogue. You will learn how to replace doubt with certainty, fear with courage, and limitations with possibilities. And you will understand that the power to change your life is not in the external circumstances, but in the conversations that you have within yourself. Remember, the change you seek in the world begins with a single inner conversation. Let this episode be a catalyst that empowers you to take control of those conversations and in doing so, take control of your destiny. Inner talking is a concept both simple and profound. It is the continuous stream of thoughts and dialogue that occur within your mind. It is the voice that speaks when we are alone, the silent commentator on our daily lives and the unseen architect of our emotions and behaviors. This internal monologue is a universal human experience. Everybody does it, yet its impact is often underestimated. The psychological basis of inner talking is deeply rooted in your cognitive processes. It stems from your ability to think abstractly and reflect upon yourself and your experiences. Psychologists recognize inner talking as a critical aspect of self-regulation, problem-solving, and planning. It's how we interpret and make sense of the world around us and our place within it. Your inner dialogues can range from positive, encouraging, and constructive to negative, demeaning, and destructive. Positive inner dialogues are characterized by affirmations, optimistic viewpoints, and constructive criticism. They are the voices that cheer us on, that help us to see the silver lining in tough situations, and encourage growth and resilience. Conversely, negative inner dialogues often manifest as critical, pessimistic, or fear-inducing thoughts. They include harsh self-criticism, catastrophic predictions, and debilitating doubt. Such thoughts can stem from past experiences, conversations, societal influences, or deep-seated insecurities. The nature of your inner dialogue significantly impacts your emotions, and behavior, positive inner talking can be a source of great strength and motivation. It can boost your self-esteem and enhance your resilience in the face of adversity and inspire you to pursue your goals with confidence and clarity. On the other hand, inner talking can be incredibly limiting. It can instill fear, reduce self-esteem, and create a sense of helplessness or hopelessness such negativity can become a self-fulfilling prophecy where you are trapped in a cycle of self-doubt and inaction. Inner talking shapes your emotional responses to events. When faced with challenges, a positive inner dialogue might frame these opportunities for growth, thus fostering feelings of excitement and motivation. In contrast, a negative inner dialogue might view these same challenges as insurmountable obstacles leading to feelings of anxiety and defeat. Similarly, your behaviors are often direct reflections of your internal dialogues. Positive inner talking can lead to proactive and goal-oriented behaviors, pushing you to take risks and seize opportunities. Negative inner talking, however, can result in avoidance behaviors, procrastination, or even self-sabotage. Understanding the nature of inner talking is the first step in harnessing its power to shape your reality. By becoming aware of the tone and content 
of your inner dialogues you begin to consciously steer them in a direction that serves your well-being and aspirations there's many examples I can give of negative inner talking to yourself we all do it and what is happening in many cases is that it's unconscious I meet very positive people that teach this stuff and are not aware of their own dialogue people that say to themselves I'm not good enough to succeed in this I always mess things up I'm not as smart or talented or competent as others I hear people catastrophizing all the time if I fail this test my entire future is ruined I'm sure they didn't laugh at my joke because they don't like me or if I make a mistake at work I'll definitely get fired there's the perfectionist who says everyone will notice if it isn't done exactly right or the one who always overgeneralizes saying I got rejected from that job I'll never find a good job or this always happens to me I never have any luck there's always the pessimist who says nothing ever goes right in my life or why bother making an effort things never change people love to personalize everything it's my fault they're upset I always say the wrong things if only I had something the fear of judgment saying to themselves if I express my opinion they will think I'm stupid I can't wear this everyone will think I look ridiculous and the classic low self-esteem is I don't deserve happiness or I'm not worthy of having good things or why would anybody be interested in me oftentimes this negative self-talk is in imaginary conversations which is even more powerful many times I've seen people get mad primarily due to an imaginary conversation that never actually happened or people have chosen not to do something because of an imaginary conversation for instance you imagine a friend saying why do you always come to me with your problems I'm tired of listening to you or a boss saying your work has been really disappointing lately I expected better from you when in fact the boss is super happy about that person but they imagine it so they're nervous around the boss the boss starts to act a little bit differently because they've had this negative conversation I see people assume negative judgments all the time. they picture their peers whispering look at what they're wearing do they really think they look good in that or they imagine a family member saying you've changed a lot not for the better then people start to form anger towards that family member who actually never said that or never even thought that now understand we are all one and understand there is a psychic connection with everybody and when you have these imaginary conversations there is a psychic link that occurs they are aware of the conversations that you're having with them perhaps you picture a friend confronting you angrily saying you always let me down I don't know why I bother with you when your friend actually doesn't think that or a neighbor saying you're the worst neighbor always causing problems so you never talk to your neighbor because you're afraid of them because you've had this imaginary conversation in your mind where they say that you're the worst neighbor or you visualize a scenario where you share an idea at work and your colleagues dismiss it without consideration saying that's ridiculous or you imagine a family member not taking your concern seriously saying you're always overreacting it's not a big deal a lot of times we run through these internal conversations as a form of practice prior to actually having the conversation and it completely rules and changes the way we have a conversation with anybody for instance you picture a friend revealing your secrets to others saying I couldn't keep it to myself it was too juicy and then you treat your friend like they revealed their secrets even though they didn't we've all seen this happen you imagine your partner admitting infidelity saying yes I cheated I knew you'd never find out maybe they never cheated but you've had this imaginary conversation so you start to distrust them because what we imagine in our minds oftentimes we cannot discriminate them from true reality that's why imagination is so important when you have these imaginary conversations there's a portion of your mind that doesn't know the difference between an imagining and a reality you envision yourself tripping up in public people laughing at you saying can't you even walk properly and so you're embarrassed around people walking even though they've never said that or you imagine giving a presentation and everyone in the room whispering about how poorly you're doing you picture a scenario 
where your contributions are ignored in a group setting and someone saying, I don't think you have anything worthwhile to add, then you're super quiet or angry and demeaning to others because you assume that that's what they were thinking or said. I've seen many, many arguments come from an assumption in what somebody else is thinking. These negative imaginary conversations with yourself and others will significantly impact your confidence, your behavior in social interactions. They often reflect underlying fears and insecurities and recognizing these patterns is crucial in working towards healthier and more positive forms of internal communication and more importantly in aligning your thoughts to your wish fulfilled. There are also a number of wonderful examples of positive inner talking. You imagine a friend saying, I'm always here for you. You can talk to me about anything. Or you hear your boss saying your hard work and dedication really stand out. We value your contribution. You're then more confident when you talk to your boss because you've imagined this conversation. Perhaps there was a psychic link with your boss and he is thinking, wow, this person is working hard and they're dedicated. When you assume positive judgments, good things happen. You picture your peers complimenting you of such a great sense of style. You always look so amazing. Or you imagine family members expressing pride. You've grown so much and we're really proud of the person you've become. Make a test and look at the times that you have positive inner talking and see if those things actually happen. They happen to me all the time. You visualize yourself joining a conversation and welcoming you saying, we're so glad you joined us. We value your input. Or you imagine a romantic interest responding warmly to your feelings. I'm really happy you shared that with me. I feel the same way. Then you have this romantic situation occur and that same thing happens. Or you picture a friend discussing issues calmly saying, let's work through this together. Your friendship means a lot. Your subsequent conversation is worked through when it could have been an angry confrontation. Or you imagine a family member taking your concerns seriously. Thank you for sharing that with me. Let's talk about it. When you're concerned about your family, even appreciating what you're going through, and then you have that conversation and then it changes. Neville Goddard's lectures are chock full of examples of him primarily imagining conversations with others as a fundamental imaginary act that is creative in every way, shape, and form. If you can envision yourself successfully navigating a social situation or giving a presentation, maybe you're nervous about giving a public speech, but you imagine a conversation where your friend says, that was insightful and engaging. Suddenly you're speaking much more comfortably because you've already heard in your mind that compliment. There's so many examples of this and it's really important. It's not being fully explored in the world of manifestation and imagination. And it's very important that we do. We're in fourth density. That means that our thoughts are shared with everyone. Right now it's on a subconscious level, but it's not like when we were kids. It's much more powerful and magnified. Imaginary conversations are a form of visualization. They shape your perception and your experience of reality. And I am telling you, these conversations are psychically broadcast. They don't just reflect what's going on internally. They are constructing your reality. Positive conversations will bring about positive outcomes and negative ones will lead to unfavorable situations. Engaging in imaginary conversation involves expectations and beliefs about certain outcomes. If these thoughts are broadcast psychically, the intensity and conviction behind them will play a crucial role in manifesting these expectations into reality. In particular, I want to talk about the emotional resonance of these conversations. Imaginary conversations are emotionally charged. These emotions resonate at a psychic level. They can influence one's mood, attitude, and daily experience. Persistent negative dialogues will lead to a more pessimistic outlook and experiences that conform with these negative biases. These conversations create a feedback loop. The experience result from the dialogues will reinforce the beliefs and expectations held in your mind, further solidifying your perception of reality. It's a surprisingly common human experience to find yourself upset or angry 
with someone over a conversation that never actually took place, except in your imagination. This phenomenon is rooted in your cognitive and emotional processes. It happens more frequently than you might realize and will have significant impact on your relationships and your emotional well-being. We've all been in an argument and then later we're thinking about the argument thinking of a really good thing we could have said back then. Rerunning the argument through our mind. Oh, I could have said that. I would have got him that time. When you do that, when you're rerunning the argument through your mind, you're in a psychic link magnifying the situation and making it worse. When you engage in imaginary conversations, your brain will process these scenarios as if they are real. The emotions evoked are genuine, even if the conversation is not. This emotional realism will lead you to react as though the imagined interaction actually occurred. Often these imaginary conversations are based on your assumptions or fears about what other people might think or say. We project our insecurities, past experiences, or biases onto another person, creating a dialogue that aligns with our expectations rather than reality. The more we dwell on these imagined interactions, the more intense your emotional responses become. This rumination can amplify negative feelings, leading to strong interactions against the person involved in the imaginary dialogue. Under stress or when experiencing anxiety or other mental strain, people are more likely to engage in negative thought patterns, including imagined conversations. And these scenarios often reflect our worst fears or anxieties leading to heightened emotional responses. Reacting to imaginary conversations will lead to misunderstandings and unfair judgments of others. As your reactions are not based on the person's actual words or actions, even if you think they were thinking that or they were going to say that. You cannot get mad at them if they didn't say it. This will strain relationships. It will make the other person feel unjustly accused or judged based on something they never said or did. It can cause significant emotional turmoil for the individual as they grapple with feelings of fear, anger, hurt, or resentment based on these fictitious scenarios. So the first step in addressing this issue is awareness, recognizing that these conversations are imaginary and distinguishing them from reality that will help mitigate unwarranted emotional responses. Challenge your assumptions always. Actively challenge your assumptions and question the validity of your imagined conversation. It will help prevent jumping to conclusions when you shouldn't. Be open and honest. If there's a concern or doubt about someone's feelings or thoughts, it's healthier to discuss these directly rather than relying on an imagined interaction. Becoming mindful about your conversation is very helpful in managing the emotional impact of these thoughts. Become aware that you're having the conversation in the first place. Getting upset over imagined conversations is a deeply human experience. It's normal. It stems from our very complex cognitive and emotional life. By understanding why this happens and learning to manage your internal dialogue, you can better navigate your emotional responses and maintain healthier relationships. This awareness is crucial not only for your interactions with others, but also for mental and emotional health. Have you ever caught yourself deep in thought, constructing elaborate dialogues and scenarios in your mind? It's like there's a never-ending conversation happening inside you, weaving together your memories, imaginations, and expectations. This internal chatter is not random. It's a fascinating blend of what you have experienced already, what you desire, and what you fear. Let's think about how these inner conversations start. Often they're triggered by something small, a comment from a colleague, a personal challenge, or an event we're looking forward to or dreading. Our mind takes this small seed, maybe it's a glance, a look, a word, and we expand it using our past experiences, beliefs, and current emotional state to shape this narrative. Imagine it like a story unfolding in your head with you as both the author and the protagonist. Why do you create these scenarios and dialogues? They're not just for entertainment. These mental rehearsals play a crucial role in how you make decisions, 
and solve problems. Think of a time when you had to make a tough choice. Chances are, you ran through various options and outcomes in your mind, weighing the pros and cons. This is your inner conversation at work, helping you anticipate the consequences of your actions. These dialogues are also where you process your emotions about a decision or problem. It's like having a safe space inside your head to understand and manage your feelings. And let's not forget the creative solutions that often emerge from these mental explorations. Sometimes the best ideas come from thinking through scenarios in your mind, allowing you to see things from different angles. Now, becoming aware of these conversations is a key. Oftentimes, we're having these conversations and we're not even aware of it. So we must become mindful. It's like tuning into a radio frequency. Suddenly, you're more aware of the thoughts and inner dialogue as it happens. Journaling is a fantastic tool. When you write down your thoughts and feelings, you get a clear picture of your inner dialogue. It's like laying out the pieces of a puzzle on a table. Cognitive behavioral techniques can also be helpful. They allow you to identify recurring themes and biases in your thoughts. And don't underestimate the power of a reflective pause. Just take a moment throughout the day to check in with your thoughts. It can make a big difference in understanding them. Sometimes talking about your thoughts with others can give us a fresh perspective. It's like having a mirror held up to our internal dialogue, showing you angles you might not have seen on your own. In essence, the mechanics of inner conversations are intricate and deeply woven into who you are. By understanding and becoming aware of these dialogues, you gain invaluable insights into yourself. You can use this knowledge to make more informed decisions, solve problems more effectively, and ultimately shape your reality in a more conscious and deliberate way. So the next time you find yourself lost in thought, just remember that you're not just daydreaming. You're engaging in a powerful process that is shaping your reality. Treat those moments like it's incredibly important. Imagine your inner conversations as a compass, pointing you toward your deepest desires and goals. And what if I told you that you could actually steer this compass in the direction that you want to go? That's what aligning your inner conversations with your desires is all about. You must transform your inner talking to support your personal goals. It's like gardening, a metaphor I always use, but it's just so good I can't help it. You need to weed out the negative thoughts and plant seeds of positive dialogue. For instance, if your goal is to become more confident in social situations, instead of thinking, I'm always so awkward at parties, try flipping the script and tell yourself, I'm learning to enjoy social gatherings more and more each time. It's really about gently nudging your thoughts in a direction that supports your aspirations. Practicing positive inner dialogues can be like learning a new language, and it takes practice. One simple exercise is to start and end your day with affirmations. In the morning, set the tone by telling yourself something encouraging related to your goals. If you're aiming for a promotion, you might say, I am capable and deserving of this new role. Before bed, reflect on positive thoughts about your progress. It's like giving your mind a roadmap of where you want to go. I mentioned journaling before, and it's very powerful. Try writing down the negative thoughts, and then consciously rewrite them into positive ones. It's like turning a gloomy story into one with a happy ending. Over time, this practice will reshape your internal narrative. You won't need to journal. If you journal just a few times, you're going to see, wow, I actually thought that. There's so many wonderful stories of real life transformations. I used to teach public speaking at the University of Wyoming. And I had a student who struggled with speaking. Her inner dialogue was filled with fears of judgment and failure. So when I talked to her, she told me that it was just all these inner conversations she was having, what people were thinking and saying about her when she was speaking. When she started replacing her fears with visualizations of successful presentations and positive affirmations, I saw her change. Slowly her confidence grew and so did her competence in public speaking. It's like 
she rewired her brain to see public speaking as an opportunity rather than a threat or something terrible. I have another friend who always dreamed of starting his own business but was held back by thoughts of not being skilled enough. He would say, I can never do that. I don't have the skill. I don't have the education to do that. I'm not going to be good enough. People are going to make fun of me. And he'd have these imaginary conversations of what people would say if he started his business. So when he began to align his inner conversations with his entrepreneurial aspirations, telling himself he was learning and growing each day, his perspective shifted. This change in mindset led him to take concrete steps toward his goal. And today he runs a successful startup. These stories show us that the way we talk to ourselves can either be our greatest barrier or our most powerful tool. By aligning your inner dialogue with your desires, you open the door to not only achieving your goals, but also enjoying the journey along the way. Remember, the conversations you have with yourself are the foundation upon which you build your life. So why not build it on thoughts that lift you up and move you forward? Understand that each inner conversation is an imaginal act and imaginal acts become real. When we talk about imaginary conversations, it's like we're diving into a fascinating world where we're both the scriptwriters and the actors. We all have these dialogues with ourselves, with others in our minds. Sometimes they're rehearsals for real conversations. We practice before we talk to someone. And other times they are reflections of our deepest fears, hopes, and dreams. Let's think about the conversations we have with our imagined selves. These are moments where we might scold ourselves, offer encouragement, or ponder decisions. It's like having an internal advisor. This self-talk is incredibly powerful in shaping your actions and your self-perception. If you're constantly critical in these dialogues, it can chip away at your self-esteem. But if your internal voice is kind and encouraging, it can be incredibly uplifting and empowering. Now consider the imaginary conversations we have with others. We've all done it, right? Argued with someone in our head, imagined or perfect romantic dialogue. These conversations impact how you feel about the people in your life. If you're always imagining conflicts, you might find yourself more defensive or irritable with that person in real life. But if your imagined interactions are positive and understanding, it will foster a sense of empathy and connection. So how can we reshape these dialogues constructively? We must be mindful. We must notice. We must flip the script. If you catch yourself having a negative imaginary conversation, pause it and rewrite it. Turn a mental argument into a constructive discussion. Imagine resolving conflicts, understanding the other person's point of view, or offering compassion to yourself. Another tip to use these imaginary dialogues for positive visualization. Before a real-life conversation or event, imagine it going well. Picture yourself speaking confidently, being well-received, and achieving your desired outcomes. It's like giving yourself a mental rehearsal for success. Remember, these conversations are like rehearsals for us. They can prepare you for better or worse for your real interaction. By steering them in a positive direction, even if you're angry with them, even if you have a point to say, and you're bubbling up with frustration, if you can steer it in a positive direction in your mind before you talk to them, you're not only improving your mental well-being, but also setting the stage for more positive real-life relationships. So keeping all of that in mind, clearly crafting effective affirmations is very important. It is like planting a seed in the garden. To create an affirmation, you start by identifying what you really want. Be specific. Instead of saying, I want to be happy, define what happiness means to you. Maybe it's, I am joyful in my work and love my life. The key is to phrase these affirmations in the present tense, as if they're already true. This might feel a bit strange at first, like you're playing pretend. But here's the thing. Your subconscious mind doesn't distinguish between reality and imagination as much as you'd think. By affirming your desires as current truths, you're training your mind to believe in their possibility. The next important element is repetition and belief. Repeating your affirmations is like watering those seeds that you've planted. Do it daily, make it a habit. 
Some people can overdo it, something that Jesus called vain repetition. So you repeat these not in vain, but with feeling, emotion, and belief. You can say them out loud in the morning, write them in a journal, or even repeat them in your mind during a commute. The repetition is crucial because it embeds these thoughts into your subconscious, making them a part of your internal dialogue. Belief is the sunlight needed for the growth. And if you're just mouthing the words without belief, they're like vain repetitions that Jesus warned us about. They're less likely to take root. Cultivating belief can take time, especially if you're working with deep-seated doubts or long-term beliefs that were built into you by your culture and your family. One way to build this new belief is through visualization. As you repeat the affirmation, try to visualize the outcome. Feel the emotions associated with the success of your affirmation. It's like adding color and life to the sketch of your desire. I've seen some incredible changes in people through affirmative talking. There's a student of mine who always struggled with self-esteem. He started using affirmations like I am worthy and capable of achieving great things. He repeated it regularly throughout the day. And over time, this new inner dialogue totally changed how he viewed himself and he began to take on challenges he had previously avoided. Then I have another student who's always anxious about her finances. She begins affirming I am financially secure and wise with money. Repeatedly, over and over again. With this new mindset, she starts making better financial decisions and even finds new opportunities to increase her income. These stories show us that affirmative inner talking isn't just wishful thinking, it's a practical tool for reshaping your thoughts and in turn your life. And by crafting and repeating affirmations that align with your deepest desires and infusing them with belief, you can start to make meaningful changes both internally and in the world around you. So why not give it a try? Start creating your own affirmations and see where this positive inner dialogue takes you. Here are 15 affirmations that you can use anytime that you're starting to have negative inner conversations with yourself. You can say, I am capable of achieving great things and trust in my ability to do so. Every day, I grow stronger and more resilient in the face of challenges. I choose to focus on the positive and find joy in the small things. I am worthy of respect love and fulfillment in all aspects of my life. My thoughts are filled with positivity and my life reflects this positivity in abundance. I have the power to create change and make a meaningful impact. I embrace each day with confidence and an open heart. My inner dialogue is kind and supportive, nourishing my soul and mind. I am surrounded by abundance and I attract opportunities for growth and success. I believe in my dreams and my internal conversations reflect them and I have the courage to pursue them relentlessly. Challenges are opportunities for growth and I approach them with a positive mindset. I am in charge of my own happiness and I choose happiness each day no matter what anybody says. I trust my intuition and wisdom to guide me in making wise decisions, not imaginary conversations. I am a beacon of love and positivity, radiating kindness to those around me. Each step I take is a step towards achieving my goals and aspirations. Write your own affirmations specific to the thoughts and conversations that you're having within you. Write them down on a piece of paper, put them up on the wall, memorize them and say them regularly to turn the tide on the negative inner conversations that occur within you. You must overcome them. Have you ever noticed a small stream of negative self-talk? will quickly turn into a torrent of self-doubt and limiting beliefs. Identifying this self-talk is the first step in transforming it. It's like being a detective in your own mind. This negativity can sneak in subtly, a little voice that says you're not good enough or you can't do this. It's important to catch these thoughts and recognize them for what they are, just thoughts, not facts. 
One effective technique is to challenge them. When a negative thought pops up, question its validity. Ask yourself, is this really true? Can I think of times when this wasn't the case? It's like shining a light in the dark corner. You don't have to accept it just because you thought it. Suddenly the shadows aren't so intimidating. Another powerful technique is to practice self-compassion. Speak to yourself as you would to a dear friend. Replace thoughts like, I always mess up with, I sometimes make mistakes, but I learn and grow from them. It's about shifting the narrative from criticism to understanding and support. Counteracting self-doubt and limiting beliefs is a bit like training muscles. It requires consistent effort. Affirmations are great tools here. Repeating positive statements that directly oppose your doubts. For instance, you think, I am not capable. You take that, you rewrite it, and you affirm, I am capable and strong. Visualization will help to amplify your conversation. So imagine yourself overcoming these negative thoughts and succeeding in your endeavors. Picture the success, feel the joy, let these positive changes fill your mind, pushing out the negative ones. There's many real life examples of this. I am reminded of someone I know who always thought he wasn't smart enough to pursue higher education. One of the smartest people I knew, but he thought he was very dumb. His mind was filled with doubts and negative self-talk. But once he started to challenge these thoughts and visualize himself succeeding, things began to change. He actually enrolled in night classes and with each small success, he gained confidence and eventually pursuing higher education. He transformed his inner dialogue and it transformed his life. Or there's Sarah. She was filled with criticisms about her weight and appearance. She couldn't leave the front door of her house. So she started practicing self-compassion and affirmation. Gradually her self-image shifted. She began taking better care of herself, not out of self-loathing, but out of self-love. And her journey wasn't about just physical health, but about overcoming the negative voices that had held her back for so long. Now for those who are already pretty good at visualizing, it's time to make it more advanced. A great way to do that is engaging all your senses. Say your goal is to buy your dream home. Don't just picture the house. You walk through it in your mind. You feel the smooth hardwood floors under your feet. You see the sunlight streaming through the windows. You smell the fresh paint. Hear the sound of your family laughing in the conversation. Now you add in the inner talking and you reassure yourself, I've worked hard for this and I deserve it. You hear people congratulating you on your new home. Emotions are the fuel that powers this process. Every time you visualize, it should be charged with a positive emotion. You feel the joy, the pride, the sense of achievement. It's these emotions that anchor the experience in your subconscious, making it more than just a mental exercise. It becomes a part of you. So start the morning. Before the rush of the day, take a few moments for yourself. This could be just a couple minutes of affirmations or a visualization exercise, or just a few minutes of mindful breathing, following your inner thoughts and conversations. You're laying the foundation for a building. It sets the stone for everything that follows. Incorporate these practices into everyday activities while commuting. Instead of letting your mind wander, engage in positive inner dialogue. Turn mundane tasks like doing dishes or showering into opportunities for reflection or positive self-talk. It's about finding those little pockets of time and using them intentionally, using positive self-conversations. And there are long-term strategies. Regular check-ins are crucial. Once a week, take some time to reflect on your goals and progress you've made. Ask yourself, am I still aligned with my desires? Have my goals shifted? It's like periodically checking a map on a long journey to ensure you're still on the right path. Remember, consistency is key. The more regularly you engage in these practices, the more they'll become natural as a part of your life. It's not about making huge changes, but taking small, consistent steps that gradually lead to this transformation. Develop a routine to monitor and improve your inner conversations. It's like setting up a checkpoint along the road for your day. As you move through the day, use the moments of transition as opportunities for brief check-ins. 
These can be moments before a meeting, during a coffee break, or even while waiting in line. Use these snippets of time to realign your thoughts like nudging a slightly off-track boat back to its course. Apply inner talking techniques in various life situations. It will be incredibly empowering. Got a big presentation? Steer your inner dialogue towards confidence and success. Are you facing a challenging conversation? Prep yourself with inner affirmations about understanding and empathy. It's like having the right tool for every job. Remember, it's about progress, not perfection. Some days will be easier than others. The goal is to gradually weave positive inner talking into the fabric of your daily life. If you've already had a real conversation that went badly, you had a terrible fight, you said something terribly, then use revision. Go back and revise the moment that you both had this conversation. Take the emotional impact out of it. If there is a psychic link, perhaps you can modify or change their memory of it or expectation of that particular conversation and how they react to it. It's important when you have a terrible argument with someone to immediately try to revise it right away. So when it's fresh in your mind, go back and imagine it and bring up all those tones of reality again. You will find this to be one of the most important things you ever learn. You have a terrible argument and it can literally destroy your day, your week, or even your year. But you sit down, you take a moment, you relax, and you imagine the conversation differently. This time around, you don't say that stupid thing that you wish that you didn't say. And then the next time you meet them, it's as if nothing happened. Now in this episode, we began by understanding the very nature of inner talking, recognizing it as a constant companion in your mental landscape. And like a skilled sculptor, you've seen how your inner dialogue can shape your emotions, influence your decisions, and ultimately carve out the path of your life. We ventured into the realm of aligning these conversations with our desires. We discovered that by gently steering our internal narratives, we can align ourselves more closely with our aspirations, turning our inner voice into a powerful ally in our quest for fulfillment and success. We then discussed the practicalities of embedding these practices into our daily lives. You've learned that consistency is key and that by weaving positive inner talking into your daily routine, you can maintain a steady course towards your goal. The impact of your inner dialogue on your personal and professional relationships is an eye-opener. It highlights the far-reaching effects of your internal conversations, reminding you that the way you talk to yourself can echo outwards, influencing your interactions and relationships in profound ways. You've seen through these many stories and case studies that I've given you and examples as testaments to the transformative power of inner talking. But remember, with great power comes great responsibility. And as you harness the power of inner talking, you must tread the path with mindfulness and integrity, ensuring that your internal conversations serve your desires, but also serve others with respect as well. You can use these inner conversations as a powerful means to help others. If someone is unemployed, you imagine having a conversation with them as employed. If someone is struggling with their finances, you imagine having a conversation in which they're telling you how wonderful their finances are. If someone doesn't have a car, you imagine them talking to you about their new car. For many, this is much easier in many cases than vivid visualization. Some people can't do. It's easier sometimes to imagine the conversation, their exact voice, and what they would sound like. But you must remember one thing after you leave this episode, that your inner dialogue is not a mere whisper in the void. It is the architect of your reality. And by mastering the art of inner talking, you hold the key to unlocking your fullest potential, to living a life that's not only successful, but also deeply fulfilling. Take this knowledge Use your inner conversations to sculpt a life that resonates with your deepest aspirations. A life where your dreams and reality converge. Remember the most powerful conversation you will ever have is the one you have with yourself. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. I'd love it if you checked out my art. You can find it at www.newearth.art. And welcome to The Reality Revolution.
We return you now to your local announcement.